I should also say that uh, the news yesterday was that this object came closest to the sun uh, and it received the huge amount of heat from the sun. Mm -hmm. And uh, the latest report indicates that it became extremely bright, much more than expected for familiar comets. 3i Atlas has just brightened dramatically right as the sun entered its most powerful activity spike in nearly 40 years. And the timing is so precise that it's forcing scientists to consider explanations they have never been willing to discuss publicly. Well, uh, that is not the most unusual fact. Uh, it actually is bluer than the sun. And a blue color usually indicates very high temperatures if uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, the light is emitted by some hot surface. But the sun is 5,800 degrees Kelvin above absolute zero. And it's very difficult to keep a surface hotter than that. In fact, an object at the distance of 3 Atlas from the sun could only be 20 times cooler than the sun. So it should be redder. What began as an interstellar visitor quietly passing through our solar system has now become a focal point of global astronomical attention, scientific tension, and whispered speculation. Not because its trajectory has changed, but because of how it responded to the sun. When interstellar object 3i Atlas passed perihelion on October 29th, its closest approach to the sun at just over 1.36 astronomical units, it was already being watched closely. At that distance, the solar radiation it encountered was intense, about 735 watts per square meter. Compared to the deep interstellar medium, where solar irradiance drops to a near vanishing background of roughly 10 to the minus 7th to 10 to the minus 8th watts per square meter, the difference is staggering. This was a dramatic thermal and energetic transition. An object formed somewhere beyond our sun's gravitational influence was now being bathed in a flood of electromagnetic radiation, charged particles, and solar wind. But that alone does not explain what happened next. During these days, the far side of the sun erupted with one of the largest sequences of coronal mass ejections seen in decades. These weren't quiet outbursts. These were massive solar storms, events powerful enough to distort magnetic fields across the solar system, events reminiscent of the Halloween storms of 2003, which caused auroras as far south as Texas and disrupted satellite communications worldwide. Many of these solar storms were launched directly into the path of 3i Atlas. Observatories equipped with coronagraph instruments, including SOHO's C2 and C3 imagers and the STEREO spacecraft, tracked both the solar storms and the comets simultaneously. Through advanced image stacking techniques necessary due to the object's faintness against the sun's glare, astronomers confirmed that 3i Atlas remained precisely on its expected hyperbolic trajectory. There was no deviation, no steering, no anomalous acceleration. The object was moving exactly as the equations predicted, but its brightness was not. 3i Atlas brightened far more than any comparable comet observed from our own solar system. Its light curve rose sharply, well above predicted values, indicating a release of dust, gas, and plasma far beyond what would normally be expected at that distance from the sun. And this brightening lined up almost perfectly with the timing of the solar storms impacting it. For a moment, the explanation seems straightforward. Solar heating plus energetic particle bombardment triggered intense outgassing. A comet heats, its ices sublimate into gas, the coma expands, sunlight reflects off dust grains, and brightness increases. That's how it's supposed to work. But the details weren't matching. Some of the brightest outputs from 3i Atlas did not behave like typical water-driven sublimation events. Spectroscopic readings from previous observations showed something unusual. The coma of 3i Atlas was dominated by carbon dioxide, not water vapor. This is rare in comets from the inner solar system, but not unheard of in extremely cold, distant objects. Yet the scale of the CO2-dominated plume, extending hundreds of thousands of kilometers, suggested either a remarkably volatile rich origin or an event triggered by non-thermal processes, something beyond simple heating. And then there was the missing data window. During a critical 36-hour period in late September, nearly every major Western observatory capable of tracking 3i Atlas was offline. Hubble was undergoing gyroscope realignment. The James Webb Space Telescope was cycling instruments. The Very Large Telescope in Chile was cleaning its mirrors. 
Gemini North and South were committed to different observation priorities. Even fallback surveys were unavailable or pointed elsewhere. This blackout coincided exactly with the object's move closest to the sun's glare, when continuous monitoring was most needed to understand its changing brightness and outgassing behavior. Yet observations continued, just not where most of the world was looking. High-altitude observatories in Tibet, Qinghai, and Yunnan remained operational throughout the western downtime. These facilities, though smaller in aperture, are optimized for long-duration monitoring. Their locations, dry, cold, high-altitude plateaus, provide excellent signal clarity. Their instruments are automated, their scheduling flexible, and their data pipelines built for rapid transmission to national research archives. It was these observatories, not NASA, not ESA, that captured the only continuous record of 3I Atlas during its most active transition. Their observations confirmed that the brightening was real, sustained, and accelerating. The brightness increased by approximately 0.3 magnitudes over the gap period, significant enough to indicate a major shift in outgassing behavior. More importantly, the coma appeared elongated in a direction consistent not with simple heating but with interaction from solar wind particle streams. This was where the tone of the discussion began to shift. Nothing about the object's trajectory changed, and yet everything about our understanding of it did. The release of the Chinese data did not come with a dramatic announcement. There was no sensational headline, no rhetorical framing. Instead, the evidence appeared quietly in standard repositories, FITS files uploaded for routine review. But the implications of the measurements were unavoidable. Without these data, the post-perihelion trajectory modeling would have been significantly less accurate. With them, scientists could confidently state that 3I Atlas behaved in ways that align with responses to intense solar electromagnetic forcing. In other words, the object didn't just brighten, it reacted. This reaction is not necessarily mysterious. Auroras on Earth brighten when charged particles hit our magnetosphere. Jupiter and Saturn display auroral storms under similar conditions. Plasma physics predicts that charged grains within a dust coma could ionize, accelerate, and radiate energy. But interstellar objects are not expected to respond this strongly to solar activity. The brightness curve alone suggests that 3I Atlas carries a significant amount of volatile material stored under pressure, material that was released not just from heating, but likely from electrical and magnetic interactions with the solar wind. There is an older debate within planetary science, one often overshadowed by more conservative interpretations, about whether comets are purely icy rock bodies heated by the sun, or whether they can act as active electrical systems interacting with solar plasma flows. In standard models, outgassing drives brightness. In electrical models, magnetic reconnection and current-driven discharge events play a role. 3I Atlas sits precisely in the gap between these frameworks. It carries the compositional signature of a distant, cold formation environment. It shows structural behavior that suggests internal volatile reservoirs. But its brightness pattern during solar storm impact implies a mechanism of energy exchange that is more dynamic, perhaps more electrical, than simple sublimation. This is why the tone of analysis has shifted. It is why observational teams in multiple countries have begun choosing their words carefully. And it is why some researchers, including prominent astrophysicist Avi Loeb, have raised questions about non-cometary interpretations, not because 3I Atlas shows direct signs of artificial structure, but because the scientific community has now seen two interstellar objects in a row display anomalous behavior that remains insufficiently explained. The narrative forming is not, 3I Atlas is artificial. It is, our models may not fully describe how interstellar material behaves in the inner solar system. Meanwhile, the sun continues to build toward what may be the most intense solar maximum in decades. The massive sunspot groups responsible for the far side eruptions that struck 3I Atlas are rotating toward the Earth-facing side. Within days to weeks, the same storm potential that triggered dramatic activity in 3I Atlas may be directed toward Earth. Here, the story becomes much less abstract. A sufficiently strong Earth-directed coronal mass ejection, especially one originating from a complex, magnetically twisted sunspot region, can do far more than create auroras. 
When a CME strikes Earth's magnetosphere, it compresses it, shakes it, and injects massive currents into the upper atmosphere. These geomagnetic disturbances can induce electrical currents in the ground itself. Power grids are not designed to handle those sudden surges. Transformers can overheat. Large-scale electrical networks can trip offline in a cascading effect. This is not theoretical, it has happened before. In 1989, a single geomagnetic storm collapsed the Hydro-Quebec grid in 92 seconds, plunging millions into darkness. Today, the stakes are much higher. The modern world is bound together by satellites, thousands of them, quietly providing GPS synchronization, telecommunications, banking timestamp verification, weather modeling, airline routing, maritime tracking, and global internet backbone services. A sufficiently energetic CME can heat the upper atmosphere, causing it to expand. That expansion increases atmospheric drag on satellites, altering their orbits. Even small changes can send satellites into decay or collision paths. Starlink operators have already seen this happen. Dozens of satellites burned up during a geomagnetic surge in 2022. GPS systems, so embedded in daily functioning that we barely remember they exist, can lose lock or return incorrect positioning. Aviation relies on satellite triangulation. So do shipping fleets. So does emergency response infrastructure. So does your smartphone. Timing errors of even a few milliseconds can cascade through financial networks, triggering algorithmic failures and market volatility. And on top of that, radiation storms can penetrate deeper into the magnetosphere during peak disturbances. That places astronauts and high-altitude flight crews at greater risk. Commercial air routes over polar regions are often rerouted during solar storms for this reason. The simple truth is unavoidable. We have built a civilization that assumes the sun will behave. But the sun does not take us into account. The irony is stark. The interstellar visitor poses no threat. Its trajectory is stable. Its path is outward, away from us. It is a curiosity, a mystery, a messenger. The threat, if there is one, comes from the familiar, not the foreign. It comes from the star we see every day. And that star is waking. 3i Atlas may be nothing more than a piece of volatile rich material reacting to sudden solar heating. Or it may be demonstrating something more subtle, the way interstellar ices respond to electromagnetic forcing in an active stellar environment. Either explanation is scientifically legitimate. Both acknowledge the same underlying truth. The sun is moving into a high energy phase, and 3i Atlas is reflecting that change, literally and figuratively. Some researchers have described the brightening of 3i Atlas as an indicator event, a visible sign of invisible processes intensifying behind the solar limb. Not an omen, not a warning, a measurement, a signal. Regardless of interpretation, one thing is undeniable. 3i Atlas has made astronomers look at the sun again with a seriousness that was beginning to fade. For years, solar physics has been treated as steady, predictable, cyclical. But cycles have peaks, and peaks have consequences. 3i Atlas forced us to look back at the sun, and the sun is looking back. As we move into November, geomagnetic conditions are expected to intensify. The same active sunspot groups that launched powerful CMEs toward 3i Atlas are now rotating toward the Earth-facing side of the Sun. The full supermoon will pass through Earth's magnetotail, amplifying turbulence and plasma flows. The magnetosphere will stretch and shift. If a CME launches during this alignment, and the odds are higher now than they have been in years, its impact could be significant we have entered a window of heightened solar potential. Not guaranteed disaster, but increased volatility, increased fragility, increased need for awareness and preparation. The stage is set for a period of space weather that could be disruptive, extraordinary, and historic, something that will be studied, remembered, and perhaps felt directly on Earth. 3i Atlas is now moving outward, away from the sun, toward the orbit of Jupiter. It will leave the solar system entirely, returning to the interstellar dark from which it came. We will not see it again. 
but the questions it raises will stay. What else passes through the solar system unnoticed? How much of the galaxy's material drifts between stars? How many stories of formation, destruction, and migration slip past us while we look in the wrong direction? And perhaps the most human question of all, what are we only now beginning to understand? The skies are active, the sun is restless, and somewhere far beyond the orbit of Mars, an object from another star is glowing brighter than anyone expected, as if, for a brief moment, it wanted to be seen.